I have a really hard time looking at myself on video. So. This video is being brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to become a part of the Ramblin' Recruiter revolution, go to www.ramblinrecruiter.com forward slash Patreon, or click the link below in the description. Computer Assisted Assessment. That's the general term that HireVue uses for their AI, the algorithms driving decision-making in the background of a HireVue video interview. HireVue games are a big part of that computer assisted assessment. But is all this AI good for us as job seekers? Is it helping us? Is it hurting us? Well, depends on a lot of different factors. But let's get our information straight from the source. Last week, I had the opportunity to meet with HireVue CEO Kevin Parker and Director of Communications Cynthia Siemens. And I promise you, I did not take it easy on them. My first question for Kevin was really about the why. What need does HireVue serve? What problem does it solve? Why do we need it? Why do we need to upend the normal process of face-to-face -face interviews in favor of video? Sure, del delighted to talk about that. And we're now 16 years old, and we just, in the last couple of weeks, completed our 15 million on-demand interview. We interview about a million people for our customers every 90 days around the world. So we've been on this 15-year journey or 16-year journey now to democratize hiring, to give more people access, to encourage companies to interview more broadly, more widely, interview fairly and consistently. Uh, and that's been our mantra since the, the very beginning. 7,000 people interviewed on the 4th of July. 7,000 people interviewed for jobs on the 4th of July because that's when it was most convenient for them. About 40% of our interviews take place on mobile devices today. About 80% of them take place outside of normal work hours. So instead of being limited by the availability of a recruiter on a nine to five schedule, we've opened it up to everybody. I decided to press forward a little bit and challenge Kevin some on HireVue's algorithm. How is it similar and how is it different to some of the other assessments out there like DISC or Gallup? We don't have an algorithm. An algorithm. And there's a lot of scientific literature about the best way to select people. And we know that the best way to select people is a combination of sort of tests of mental abilities and structured interviewing. And, and as human beings, we're terrible at structured interviewing. You know, all of our conscious and unconscious biases come into play. We have a team of IO psychs that goes out and interviews people, looks, looks at the job, looks at the skills involved decides and together with the customer decides what are the attributes that we need. We can embed that right in the video interview and, and have the game played. And so you can have it all collapsed into one fast process. The best way to think of it, we're taking legacy assessments and bringing in the modern age with modern computing power and measuring the competencies that are associated with success in a job. One of the persistent criticisms of HireVue is because you can see a job seeker's ethnicity, gender, age, weight, height, hair color, eye color, tattoos, piercings, you name it, before you've actually committed to speaking with them. That higher view actually promotes discrimination, not alleviates discrimination. I asked Kevin directly to address this criticism. We can look at thousands of interviews and have a very diverse data set around age, gender, ethnicity, race, uh, and, and do all the analysis that we need to to make sure that we're not having any adverse impact on any group but really measuring the competency we're looking for. My conversation with Kevin on discrimination continued, and honestly, I felt a bit like he was sticking close to higher view talking points rather than addressing specific criticism. The most important thing that I think we can do as a society, as a culture, to improve diversity is structured interviewing. Just to ask everybody the same questions and make sure the questions are related to work, not, you know, what did you do at high school in your summers? Where did you intern? And, you know, you know, What's your favorite NBA team? Whatever it is, those aren't really related to work. You know, if, if we ask good open-ended questions about work-based competencies, tell me about a time you worked on a team and what your role was and how you contributed to the success of that team. But you can't do it with people. We're, we're the weak link. But when you can ask a thousand people that question and 10,000 people that question, the answers really start to matter. So the first step is asking, asking good questions. The second step is really about um, trying to eliminate as much human bias in, in the decision-making process as we can, conscious and unconscious. 
So we have a consistent rating scale and the assessments we, we use are checked very thoroughly against adverse impact you're going to get the right result. You're going to get a very diverse group of qualified candidates to, as finalists in the job. We're not making the final decision. We, that's not our role. Our goal is to help companies interview very broadly, uh, which is the first step in inclusion, give everybody a consistent experience, and then down -select, down select to a group of finalists on a very fair and consistent basis. So if the algorithms are this powerful, the question that has to be asked, is HireVue a better judge of talent than a human. I, I think it is. Uh, we're terrible decision makers. We have all sorts of heuristics and cognitive biases that, you know, some are conscious, some are unconscious, but make us terrible decision makers. We're also terrible judges of other people. Most of the time we're projecting on that individual our own sense of, of what the world is. So it has the, you know, the, the human interviewer has this illusion of validity. Well, I really know it when I see it. And you know, it's I looked deep into his eyes and saw his soul and we can trust that guy or I, you know, he's got the right kind of handshake. Those aren't reasons to hire people, yet that happens all the time. Uh, when we have a very fair, consistent process, we've tested it for adverse impact. We know that we're improving the outcomes from a diversity perspective. Many people believe that HireVue's algorithms can detect a lie. I asked Kevin directly if this was the case. It is not true, and, and, and we have never measured truthfulness for anyone. And I'd also point out it's illegal. There's actually a federal law about polygraph, the Polygraph Protection Act that prohibits most private employers from even surveying for truthfulness. We have never done it, we never will do it, uh, and it's illegal in the United States. He asks Kevin if we need to rethink some of the traditional training around behavioral-based interviews. Does answering in the first person hurt you on a higher view? Depends on the question too, right? So if, if I'm asking you a question about, you know, tenacity and grit and, and you know, stick to itiveness, if I can describe it that way, and you're using the we word, it's like, well, that's not, that's not that great. You know, we want to know what, what Darren did. On the other hand, teamwork is different. So it tends, you know, think of it as uh, almost a word cloud, right? It's, you know, what are, what are we talking about? What are the most team-oriented people talking about compared to the least team-oriented people? What do they talk about? Do they talk in the present tense or the future tense? Do they talk in the past tense? You know, just a whole bunch of things that are correlated to the attribute we're trying to measure. Can keyword optimizing your answer help you on a higher view? I was surprised by the answer. I suppose it's possible that it could get you to the next step in the process, whatever that is, but you know, it's only gonna get you so far. I asked Kevin how job seekers can prepare for a higher view. His answer was quite simple. In most of our interviews, there are practice sessions. So we allow candidates to do practice sessions in, in particular. Uh, we're about to launch uh, at the college and university level a site specifically for college students to practice interviews as many times as we want. We won't keep the data. Uh, they can play a sample game uh, in that context. It's not the real game, but just to get them familiar with it. The games aren't aren't hard. They're not, you know, they're not, it's not like playing chess or anything where you've got to, you know, read up on a rule book. They're fairly straightforward and, and pretty enjoyable to play. You only need to take a quick look at HireVue's Facebook page to see that there are a lot of job seekers out there who have a lot of negative feedback on HireVue. Everything from it's lazy on the part of the companies who are using it to it discriminates against people who don't have webcam experience to it just doesn't sit well with most job seekers. I asked Kevin to directly respond to this criticism. This is where I feel like he's stuck closer to talking points. I think those are good individual criticisms. I think by, by and large, in fact, the majority of folks actually find it a pretty a good experience. We track the net promoter score for all of our candidates and for all of our interviews and our average net promoter score is about a 70. We have some companies that have net promoter scores in the 90s in terms of, in terms of act activity. A lot of that though depends on the company. And so remember we're a tool and so it can be used poorly and it can be used extraordinarily well. You know, Vodafone's been a customer for a number of years and they used to have the CEO record the introduction to every interview. Hi, I'm Kevin, I'm the CEO of Vodafone. Really glad you're here today, Darren. I hope you're, we're, you enjoy this experience. We're using this to try and reach out to more people uh, and I'll be back at the end to tell you what happens. 
we have a call center that operates 24 hours a day in multiple languages to support candidates. Uh, and for every 100, 100 interviews that we do, we get less than one phone call. I wanted to understand from Kevin, what are some of the best practices out there for companies considering HireVue? Who's doing it right? What does good look like? I think people realize that it's a great opportunity to extend your employment brand in real unique ways. Um, you know, we have a, a very long time customer in, in the Midwest, Children's Mercy Hospital. It's a pediatric hospital. They have patients, kids record the questions. And then, you know, a kid comes on at the beginning, I know you're interviewing, don't be nervous, you know, and, and sort of make it a really engaging experience. Um, Delta Airlines uh, is, is a very big customer. We interviewed, I own last year, maybe 180,000 candidates for Delta Airlines uh, for flight attendant jobs. And, you know, just the, the level of enthusiasm that flight attendants have about the interviewing process. You go on flight attendant chat boards, it's like, I did my higher view interview because Delta's made it a very personalized experience. The people that do it extraordinarily well and invest some time and effort and recognize it's part of their employment brand. It's a way to reach out to more candidates uh, and, and do really extraordinary things. I asked Kevin what he thinks the best thing a candidate who's a little bit nervous about having a higher view interview can do to prepare. It, you know, I recognize it's stressful, but in-person interviewing can be stressful as well. There are practice interviews, practice sessions, even before you start the interview, you can do practice questions and do as many as you want. You, you shouldn't sit in front of an open window so you're, you, you can, we can see your face and so the recruiter can see your face. But, you know, it's, I've seen great interviews done on the front seat of cars. I've seen great interviews at kitchen tables. Um, you know, out and out, you know, on a picnic table somewhere. It's, it's, you know, I, those are exciting to see. And that really influences our, our continuing goal to democratize the process. You know, I think if I were a candidate, I'd be thinking I'm getting the same shot everybody else's. For most job seekers, the jury is still out on higher view, but for us recruiters, it's coming for our jobs. HireVue and tools like it that are driven by AI, machine learning, and algorithms are taking over the talent acquisition and recruiting space. For us, it's time to adapt or start dusting off those resumes and looking for new careers. Whatever your thoughts on HireVue may be, it's not every day that you get the CEO of a major corporation to sit down with you for a Zoom call interview. So I wanna say thanks to Kevin and to Cynthia very much for agreeing to meet with me. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe, click the bell, and stay classy, YouTube. I'll see you next time. Peace.